Activity 8 and Concept 1.2. Um, I actually really, really like this um, lab because it creates um, one of my favorite graphs, which is the um, temperature heating curve for water or from the different phases of water. So what you want to do is want to get some ice into a beaker as well as having a thermometer. And I think that just to get this a little freeze start, we actually want to have a bit of water in there. Um, the water is going to make it a little bit easier to for the thermometer to pick up the temperature. So you're going to want to make sure that your thermometer is submerged. So I'm actually going to switch over to one of the longer thermometers, able to get the bulb down in there. And before you set it on there, you, this is ice water. So what you want to make sure is that your thermometer drops close to zero degrees Celsius around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's never actually perfectly at that, that, but as long as you start off close, we are at two, getting close to one degree. If you have a digital thermometer at your school, that would be even better. And then you're gonna to want to periodically stir this as you go throughout. So you'll also want to start a timer so that way um, and it actually recommends that you have a timer that kind of like every minute sounds an alarm so that way you check it at periodic um, times. And so this would be great to have different students doing different roles and they can tell um, what step they are at. Before they get the temperature, I suggest they do a stir and then get their temperature reading. Uh, what's really cool about this graph is as the ice is melting, they're actually going to see that the temperature of the ice water is going to stay pretty consistent. Um, the one issue with this and why I might recommend that you fill this up with a bit more water and then you can clamp your thermometer up higher is with my thermometer it is right on the actual bottom of the cup which is touching the beaker. So I think I'm getting a slightly higher temperature reading um, than what I should be getting. But nonetheless it is staying pretty constant as the ice is melting. So we're staying constant, constant, constant. And then what we should notice is once all that ice melts and there's no more ice, then we should start to see the temperature rise. And if you carry this on as long as you want, um, I think this tells you to just go as long as the water ice melts and then stop. But if you decide to carry this investigation on to where you start to get the water boiling, so then you'll see the temperature rise, 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 it hits 100 degrees Celsius and then it stops again as it boils. And so that's a pretty neat graph and helps students understand that when you have ice water, it's at a constant temperature, even as it's melting. Um, and then that comes in later, and I don't know if it was this year or next year, for seventh or eighth grade, um, a discussion about how much energy it takes um, for the same amount of ice and water to heat up um, the same temperature, and it takes ice more energy because you have to melt it first and then you can raise the temperature and so this is kind of a setup for that so we have just now gotten rid of all the ice I feel just a couple tiny pieces those are all gone now so if I place my thermometer in I should start to see that start to rise we are now going past 15 up towards 20 and so you see once the ice is gone now the temperature can rise uh, so kind of cool concept there we've hit 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So fun lab, um, maybe make a few modifications just to make this a little bit more accurate. Um, but I think it'll produce great data that students can then graph and then you have great discussions around that. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.